on this video, we will be looking at regional and directional terminology, body planes and cavities. But before we move on to these topics, let's look at this concept. Anatomical position shows an individual standing upright, hands on the side with palms facing to the front, feet next to each other, face forward. I encourage you to try to stand like this just now. Give it a go. How did it feel? Well, if you are at all like me, you would quickly find that it feels a bit uncomfortable. We humans are not naturally standing like this. So, why do we always think of an individual as he or she was in an anatomical position when we talk about them using medical directional terminology? Well, the fact is that often we might find our patients in the most varied positions. I worked on the forensic field for some time, and I can tell you that sometimes you even find bodies with detached limbs and body parts. It would be very difficult to discuss or report in writing about these injuries, special characteristics and so on, if we had to always start by defining the specifics of that individual's position in space. Therefore, what we rather do in medicine is that we assume that we describe that individual's body parts as if they were in an anatomical position. And this anatomical position will become very important for us when we later look at directional terminology and so on. Now, what I want to introduce you is a concept that body can be divided into two major parts. The axial body and the appendicular body. The axial body shown on the blue turquoise color on this figure is composed of the head and neck as well as the trunk. The appendicular body, which is now shown on that blue turquoise color, is made of the limbs. This is the legs and arms of the individual. So, those are our first way of dividing the body in different sections. There are others, though. Here is a bit busier way of defining different body areas. It might initially seem like a way too much to take in, but fear not. These terms become more familiar to you as you study more anatomy and physiology, and soon it will be like a second language to you to use this. I will provide you a nice handout of these on the next section of our course's Blackboard Weekly module. And here are more terms, this time from the back of the human body. Again, take Time to familiarize yourself with this using your textbook and the materials that I upload to Blackboard. Okay, let's look at the different planes of section that we can have to study the human body. This first one is known as median plane or sagittal plane. It separates you to the right and left side. And here you can see if the plane is located right in the middle, it's called mid-sagittal plane. We call the second one either as frontal or coronal plane. As name suggests, it divides you into the front and back. Or the one that I prefer as a mnemonic, the coronal section cuts you in half right where your hands would go when you put on a crown. Try it out! Neat, huh? Finally, the last one that I want to introduce to you is the transverse plane. It, in turn, divides you into the top and bottom part. Usually, it is these planes that we use to section human body, for example, when doing medical imaging. However, on occasion, there are times when none of these planes work. If we take a cut in any other plane than these, we would typically talk about using an oblique plane.
Now comes a big one. On this next section, I want to introduce you to some directional terminology that is commonly used. It is a lot, but I have provided you a handout that you can print and color in as you study these. Trust me, it's doable. So, here we have a few diagrams of a person. You will find these exactly same drawings on handout that I have provided for you, so that you can print it and follow with me. Let's start adding some directional terms to that. When we discuss of directions, think of it as having two poles. Here we have the superior part, which is the part of the body that is above to the point of reference that we are using. So just like you may have at work people that are in rank superior to you, they are above you. The superior part is the top part. Inferior part instead is below the point of reference. Think of a term inferior complex. It means that someone is, feels like being below or less worthy than others. If you can always develop your own mnemonics, I just try to share some of my favorite ones with you here. Next one is anterior and posterior. Anterior refers to something being in front of you, while posterior would be behind you. What other directions can we think of? Well, how about this? Here we have medial part, which is close to the midline of the body, while lateral part is further away from the midline. Now we are talking about directional terms that typically relate to the limbs, upper or lower ones. Here we have a part that is more proximal, so it's closer to the trunk, while distal parts are further away from the trunk. Okay, this next one may seem confusing at first. We have cranial, which refers to a part that is towards the skull of an animal. And caudal, instead, is towards the tail of an animal. Why to use these terms as we already have superior and inferior? Well, the answer lies in the fact that not all animals walk on two feet like us humans. So, although our cranial and caudal align with the terms of superior and inferior, it is a very different thing for animals on four feet, like dogs. Their cranial would be likely more anterior and caudal more posterior. I hope that makes more sense now. We also have here supine and prone. You can think of them in relation to the palms of the hand here. Supine is towards the palms. But this can be thought on a larger scale too. If you are laying on your back on the floor, you are said to be in a supine position, and lying face downwards would be prone. One more that I can think of. Superficial is close to the surface. While deep is an opposite to it, deep inside. Think of a person we might describe as being very superficial. They would only be interested on how they appear, very shallow things. Deep person instead would have something to offer far beyond the very initial surface impression. Well, that was a lot. Here you can see all the directional terms that we have talked about. Practice them by describing relationships of different body parts. For example, wrist is more distal than an elbow. Shoulder would be more proximal than an elbow. Or nose is more medial, while your ear is more lateral. And so on and so on. What we are going to look at next is the body cavities. Our bodies are full of all kinds of spaces, 
cavities if you wish. And by large, they can be divided into two. Dorsal cavity is on the posterior side of our body, while ventral cavity is more on the anterior. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. The dorsal cavity, which is illustrated here in yellow, is composed of the cranial cavity, where the brain is enclosed in, and the vertebral cavity, inside which runs the spinal cord. Ventral cavity instead is shown on this reddish-brown color on this diagram and it includes thoracic cavity with the heart and lungs inside it, abdominal cavity where our intestines are at large, and pelvic cavity where our urinary bladder and reproductive organs for example are in. Some of these can be divided even further like the thoracic cavity. But we'll talk about all that later. I want to finish off with quickly showing you two methods of dividing the abdominal region into smaller areas. Here on the first example we have split it into four boxes. These can be named based on their locations as right or left and as upper or lower. And this one of the common ways how medical practitioners roughly locate the organs included within each section. So a pain in the upper right quadrant could be, for example, indicative of liver issues and so on. But that is not the only way to do these divisions. In the second example, we use nine regions of the abdominal and pelvic area. And these again are named based on their location and structures that are associated with them. This is the end of our third video lecture of this chapter. And on our next and final video of this chapter, we will be looking at terminology for various movements.